Oh, the most common one is the is the byproduct account. It's that um, uh, uh, clitorises are small. And actually, sorry, can I show you one? Um, yes. And not. So uh, normally, when I get the book, I give I give away one of these. So this is a li uh, this is a life size clitoris, and uh, it, it, it often it often surprises people because it's about four inches in length. A lot of it's internal. Uh, it's multiply innovated. Um, it's got its own attendant somatosensory cortex. There's a bit of your brain that corresponds to your body uh, and it's a sort of it's the readout of the body and women's uh, somatosensory cortex which some people have you ever seen one of those homunculuses where it's a, it's, a, it's a model and it's got a big head big hands big feet tiny little pipe cleaner limbs and it corresponds to how much neural tissue in the brain makes it run it's called a it's called a homunculus it's called a penfield homunculus after wilder penfield who was the canadian um neuroscientist who came up with them well women's homunculus is different from the men's and some some uh some scholars think it should be called a homunculus which is quite a good pun. <laughs> and it's, but it's not the same and it's and it has uh, it has bits that make the female genital system work that aren't the same as the men's one and and all of this just makes the whole byproduct i mean just 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 the size of the clitoris and its complexity and its attendant uh neural tissue just makes the the byproduct account a total non-starter and th that might have been something where in 1979 when don simons sort of first proposed this okay so back in back then maybe you could have thought that by 2005 when elizabeth lloyd was writing the book only willful ignorance could could have made you say that or or some sort of politics there is, and the thing is there is some interesting politics here uh, but we'll come around to that later if you like it's very so okay so, yes. you, so you've got the byproduct idea uh, you've got the idea that uh, it's got a pair bonding effect mm -hmm. so it just it makes it, it just uh, it, it glues you together and, and we think there almost certainly is an effect of that uh, the oxytocin does that it makes you feel trusting makes you feel all sort of it does make you feel warm and cuddly it makes you makes you trusting of insiders and particularly untrusting of outsiders you know anyone who's anyone who's daft enough to get between a mother bear and her cubs well, mm. well she, she's she's loaded with oxytocin but you, you won't be feeling the cut well you might be getting cuddled but it, it, you you won't you know survive the process <laughs> the um, yeah, yes. yeah she, her, her, her love isn't general for the world it's very specific to the individual mm -hmm. um but we we think it also creates well we know it creates uterine peristalsis because we've tested it you know you you inject some inject one with the oxytocin and you get a flow of material up the fallopian tubes well, now what we need to do is, is is study this directly. And occasionally, I get into these conversations where people go, "Yes, but have you directly studied fertility?" Uh, as it, and I say, "Well, no. Have you directly studied the effect of you know uh, male erections on fertility?" And they go, "Oh, well, 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 that's obvious, isn't it?" Well, yeah, it's it's the same kind of obvious. I mean, when it comes to women's sexuality, there is this, there is an unreasonable demand for a level of evidence that that chains together. Uh, that isn't demanded of anything else. I mean, for example, if someone was to point out, as as people like me do, because they're feeling a bit mischievous, that there are eighteen thousand ejaculations a second and four point four births. So that's on, on the world. Okay, that's as, wow. we're, as we're talking. Now, if someone was to go as a result of that, surprised you can't well, hear it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but it's almost to point out that that means that the male uh, reproductive system is incredibly inefficient. People go, well, but wait a minute, that's not what, well, yeah, no, I mean, but, yeah, let, let's, let's, let, 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 let's, let, let's look at the evidence, you know, in, in, in proportion rather than just sort of um, you know, demand a certain kind of evidence. In, in, in the case of women, I think what, what's, what people find hard to acknowledge is that women are active sexual strategists rather mm -hmm. than passive recipients of either male ardor or, or male power, depending on your sort of political leanings. Uh, Darwin found that hard to accept. Uh, he, 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 he had a real problem with the whole idea of sexual selection. Um, I mean, and it was his idea. And he, he, as a Victorian gentleman, he found it hard to imagine that actually you know, a huge amount of why he was the way he was was because he had been on the receiving end of sexual selection. But this is one of the first things Olivia taught me was that female sexual selection is the key driver in primate evolution, and we are no exception. Uh, and the moment you, do, moment you start seeing other, things like that. Do other um, female mammals? Uh, All the ones we've tested. Well, we, don't, we, can't, we, we, can't, we can't ask them. Uh, I mean, we, 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 but um, we, we, that's what I mean when you say we've had animal models going back 100 years. We, when we're talking about oxytocin-mediated uterine yes. peristalsis okay. is a thing that we have studied in yeah. uh, rabbits, sheep, dogs, horses, and most particularly pigs. In, in the, it, I mean, in terms of, I, 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 I used to routinely get asked to comment on pig breeding um, because if you sort of, because the, the kinds of things I write about, um, pig breeders are completely and utterly unsqueamish about. Uh, if, you're, if you're buying um, boar 
that's sperm. It's really expensive stuff. You do not want it spilling out all over the floors of the um, uh, the, the pig sties. And so when yeah. you administer it, you make sure that the females in question uh, retain as much as possible. Let's let's be as uh, uh, they're, and they're not they're not they're not too coy about the mechanisms they use for stimulating either. They don't call it orgasm, but it is it is oxytocin mediated uterine peristalsis. And, wow. Uh, um, and do uh, do female mammals in general? It's it's a similar method for for orgasm, which is well, you um, you go into it in your book, penetrative, yes. um, yeah. versus sort of clitoral, I believe. Yeah, well, yeah, no, we're, well, we're very care- we're careful about that because uh, when when we 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 we, 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 we seem to very broadly divide their orgasms into deep and surface, uh, and but that, that was as a result of of our analysing the things they said. We wanted mm-hmm. to steer clear of clitoral and vaginal for a bunch yeah. of reasons. One was um, because of the associations with Freud, and um, mm. that that just sort of brings a huge amount of baggage with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so oh, we didn't so want to steer the clitoris people. goes back does go back internally yeah right and the, the other thing mm-hmm. is that the, you know, the clitoris is a lot bigger the, the clitoris yes. is the seat of orgasm but it, it looks mm-hmm. like if you stimulate the clitoris and other things as well and there's lots of other um uh, areas that are, are stimula- stimulatable then that's what seems to produce the most oxytocin like reactions although I, I should stress the the studies we did we weren't measuring oxytocin directly other people like Ludwig Vilt and the foxes they they were studying oxytocin action directly we're studying it indirectly by asking women about their experiences and there are certain things that produce um certain symptoms and you know unlike if I'm studying I'm a behavioral ecologist by kind of training and inclination uh but I have the advantage I can ask my um I can ask my participants how it feels you know I can't, mm-hmm. if I'm if you're studying your cockatoo I can't ask how it feels to be a cockatoo but I can ask women you know did you have apnea which is that oh, sort of catching mm-hmm. a breath was their body folding were there feelings of trust was there feelings of loss of self were there feelings of internal pulsing and all of those things are oxytocin related things so we're, we're studying it indirectly fascinating 